you've been yelled at. There it is. Happy Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome to a new edition of the Bid Nerd Show, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids. Bring a trailer, peak our market, rad for sale, Hemmings. How many more of these auction sites can there possibly be? There yeah. are a million of them. Everyone's got one. My dog has an automotive auction site now. Um, yeah, welcome, everybody. So, so- Sooner or later, we'll be covering cars down at Bob's Auto Impound, you know? <laughs> it's so true. Uh, my name is John Polnick. I'm coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, and we've got Michael Deeb over there coming to you from San Francisco. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, yesterday, we had some pretty interesting cars, and uh, what we do on this show is we talk about cars. Uh, we talk about the cars that are coming up for auction today, right now, and then we make predictions as to what we think those cars will actually hammer for when that hammer comes down at the end of their auctions. And, uh, and we keep track. We talk about yesterday's numbers. We don't just like throw a number out there and say, forget it. Ha <laughs> ha. No accountability. No, we go back and we, uh, we see how we did the day before. And, uh, <laughs> yesterday, I think we had some very interesting cars. Michael Deeb, how did yesterday's predictions go? Mm, we didn't have any interesting cars. So why don't we just skip it? Oh, okay. So basically I got them all right. And you didn't. Is the takeaway I'm right. for you? You got one got, right. All right, I got one right. Hey, one out of five ain't bad. All right, <laughs> what, what were what were the cars that we talked about yesterday? JP, yesterday it was a bad crush. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I had a right or but a great because you just on the right side of me every single time. It was uh, hmm. yeah, it hmm. was pretty. It was pretty embarrassing. Um, our star car was interesting because what we used for a star car was the uh, BMW. M Roadster, the Z4 M Roadster. And yeah. what we wound up doing is kind of covering two of these. So uh, yeah, the star car was really a pair of them. So the first one was the black one on cars and bids with miles. This had like 95,000 miles on it. Black on black, stick shift, largely one owner, I think up to last year. And uh, no stories, just a really great value. As such, we both decided we love the car and we should own one. <laughs> I thought this car would bring $18,000. You guessed correctly that it would not and said $17,000. And some lucky son of a gun bought this car, JP, for just $16,000 for your first win of the day. Yeah. Um, conversely, we jumped right over to bring a trailer and looked at a very similar car. By the way, the black one was in California. We looked at a very similar car in Florida that was red with less than half the miles, I think thirty seven or 38,000 miles, yeah. JP. Uh, four owners, but the car was in really good condition. Clean Carfax report, no stories, no hiccups, no hurdles or red flags. Uh, just a really nice example. And I thought this car would bring $27,000, and you did not. You guessed, I mean, like really close. You said $25,000. Uh, this car sold for $25,250. Mm-hmm. And I will take this moment to rub your face in the fact that you missed a Yahtzee by $250. $250. You know, I think I, I'm starting to notice a trend uh, as we do these predictions. Uh, you throw a number out there. Typically, your numbers are based what I'm noticing, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like your numbers are based on what you think these cars should be worth. And I yeah. would agree with you that this car should be a nearly $30,000 car. This oh, is goodness, such yeah. an amazing car. I mean, it's right? frankly way better than any 996 for the same money, which is ba- its only real competitor. Um, and uh, uh, this is just this is just so much better a car. Um, yeah. And so I, I tend to try to, I, I'm just a negative nilly. Um, yeah. But uh, and, yours and are more aspirational. Well, it's probably what makes the show so compelling to our 15 people in the audience. Yeah. Thank you for 30% of the audience <laughs> being at Peak Market. Um, I also try to think, you know, by and large, and much to the chagrin of Peak Car Market, by and large, most of our cars are offering a trailer. So when we throw out a car that's on the trailer, you kind of think, most of the time, it's going to reach what the car is worth. So I thought this car could hit and should hit 27. But I don't know. Maybe it's floor. Maybe it was four owners. Maybe it was red. I don't know. But uh, 25 is still a deal, I think. Yeah. You know, 27, I think, would still be a deal. This car should be a $30,000 car. And so I, What you know, the heck I else could you possibly get for that kind of money with this few oh miles and goodness. this kind of performance? Uh, I mean, there's uh, just nothing. No. Nothing. No, JP, yet, yesterday you astutely compared this car, this model, to the same generation Porsche cab. Yeah. And, uh, 
and you know the, the Porsche cab you pay a premium to get it you pay mm-hmm. a premium for the insurance um, mm-hmm. and then you pay a premium for the maintenance on that particular generation of Porsche cab yep. and so this winds up looking like a screaming deal for super similar performance so yeah, uh, for sure. really really great take uh, anyways we looked at one last BMW because we we're on a roll also on bring a trailer was this cool little 1991 318 IS um, you know, all the accoutrement. I love the spoilers and the, the basket weave and the, the sports seats on this thing are, are just epic. This car was rough, though, admittedly, JP. I still thought it would bring some money. There was some action on it. Uh, JP, wasn't this car out of your old hometown up in Linwood? Uh, was it this car? Or was it a, Yeah, I guess it was. It's a Washington one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and so, anyways, uh, I think this car was up there in Linwood. Uh, we both thought it was a little rough. I didn't think it would get ten grand, but I thought it would be close, so I said 9500 You came in under at 8500 and again, you missed the Yahtzee by $400. This car sold for just $8,100. I think this was also a no-reserve auction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, we did look at a 911 cab, an 88 though, a turbo look with the very rare M470 mm. spoiler delete package, which creates this really hulking looking vehicle with the wide body, normally aspirated and no wing. It's kind of Speedster-esque, uh, but you don't have to pay Speedster prices. I thought that this car would come close though. I really thought this car was poised to bring $100,000. So you conservatively bet under me at 95 and this car, JP, only got a few thousand dollars more from where we were looking at it. I think we were looking at it like, I don't know, somewhere between eighty-one and eighty-three thousand in the morning. This car only made like another five grand and brought eighty-eight thousand five hundred dollars and sold. So I would say, all things considered, that's pretty well sold and pretty well bought. Uh, congratulations to both parties involved in that transaction. It is a beautiful car, despite the miles. Uh, it does sixty thousand miles, you know. Yeah, that rare package that even I hadn't heard of is is very interesting, but I just don't think it translates to dollars because you know no. you get you get too rare and nobody knows about it, and so no one's going to pay a premium for it. I suppose I I would like to coin the uh, the term cabster. Uh, my nine nine three is kind of like that. It's wide and low, but it has the regular uh, cab yes. windshield. So uh, I think great. we'll call this a cabster, a no wing, wide yeah. body cab. Can, can, yeah. can we borrow from Cars and Cafe and make cabster with a K? <laughs> yes yes you can which by the way cars and cafe the last sunday of every month in downtown oh, las sh- vegas happens to be this sunday How, how'd you know that's true shameless plugs shameless about. plug yes yes, yes. Hey, go there and pick up a new guy's custom bracelet for you or yours that is um, correct that is good yeah. good, uh, good advice uh you gonna make Absolutely. it out here uh, to, to vegas uh, we are we might be we might be planning a surprise just don't all tell right. anybody okay yeah right. we're, we're, okay. we're, we're it's really po- uh, real, real uh real possibility uh one last thing on the cabster jp uh <laughs> i i after the, the thing was over i looked at his pictures again and in his garage he has four correct steering wheels for that end generation oh, of 911 sick, yeah. and he has a black uh turbo t- you know the tea tray wing hanging on the wall yeah. so this guy probably at one point had the wing on his car but yeah. returned it back to original spec for the ads uh so good on you i love uh, a garage full of wings as you know you um, uh our- you are not unlike that and our friend Dwayne wick might have us all beat that guy's got oh, wings. God, no. he's got more wings than a flock of seagulls <laughs> boom, boom. Oh, uh, dropped that <laughs> Oh, that I, was awesome. you know, dad, dad jokes from the synthesized 1980s. Kaboom! If you want to be a dad like us, I happen to have a T tray turbo wing in petrol metallic blue sitting in my garage. Yes. Uh, if somebody wants it, it's up on oh my Craigslist it's, or something for three hundred bucks. So good, uh, come and get it. Um, so good. Oh my all God. right, all right. Last car of the day, JP. Uh, uh, this car, dang it! I got to want to talk I gotta about tee this, this car. Up. I got to tee this up for the audience. So it's a 1994 Volkswagen Corrado 16 valve. Yes. And if you said, wait, that's a VR6, you're a nerd. Because this particular car is a Japanese domestic market vehicle that was imported by the consigner in the early part of last year. Uh, It is offered on a Georgia title uh, with just, JP, what was the miles on this thing? I really forget. I don't know. 60. It was like 50,000 miles and 100 something kilometers or whatever. Dark gray metallic. Yeah, dark gray metallic with light gray velour interior and confetti sport cloth inserts. This car was cool. They never brought this to the United States and there was really nothing wrong with this car. I honestly thought this car would bring 20 and in a very rare moment indeed, uh, JP bet the over and said 22,000. 
Our friend John Polnick would love this car and probably had an authentic intention to buy it, but had to step into a phone meeting, a predetermined phone meeting that conflicted with the close of this auction. And this car sold for just $14,300. I would like to announce that I bought it just to rub your nose in it, but that wouldn't be, <laughs> that would, that would be awesome be if you true. showed up to Cars yeah, Cafe yeah. in this car. Yeah, yeah, um, just, yeah. So neater, neater, neater. Oh, yeah, this, my uh, gosh. Oh I my am God. so disappointed about this car. I can't believe it didn't bring more money. Um, yep. And uh, I would have bought, I would have bought this car uh, oh my gosh. had I been available. I mean, I even had it up on the screen. I'm in a stupid Zoom meeting um, yep. with a client talking about, oh, my God, this client. I just wanted, and I, I was thinking about this thing before, too. I'm going, this, all right, yeah, I can do both. And, and I had the screen set up, and I just forgot because they were asking just the dumbest questions, and I'm just like, uh, so yeah, I missed it, and it's probably a good thing because I mean, look, bring a trailer, <laughs> whatever, whatever it sells for, and bring a trailer is what it's worth. It's kind of like the old saying: you're you, you're paid what you're worth. You know, people get really upset about that. Uh, if you get paid uh, eleven dollars an hour, that's what you're worth. Sorry, if you get paid a hundred, that's what you're worth. If the car mm, only brings fourteen thousand three hundred bucks on BAT, that's what it's worth. You, you can make all kinds of arguments saying one way or the other, but. Eh, people only pay this now i will mention though uh I, to really pour salt in my own wound reading the comments after the fact there were more than one person there was more than one bidder saying that they were having internet problems and oh, were not no. able to bid at the end like someone was like dang cox internet so it's entirely possible that the that the price of this car was suppressed by bidders who would have bid higher uh, yeah. which just makes it even more painful to me. So yeah, maybe it is worth more than it was. Uh, there was such point. a, there was such a groundswell of 16 valve enthusiasts that mm. everybody bidding at the same time broke, bring a trailer and nobody even noticed. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. think, cause like we always talk about, you know, if a clean, if a Shiraco came up, oh, a 16 valve Shiraco that was this clean, with the same miles, yeah, with same, the same miles, just like all things being equal, you know, an 88 last year Shiraco or even better, a, a, a you know, a, a 90 Shiraco or whatever that they continue to make in right. that, in that body style. Uh, maybe this is kind of an example of something like that. But you got to think that would break 20 in this condition because we've seen oh, a regular sure. piece, piece of crap Shiraka's going for 10. So No, J J John, this yeah. is this is arguably one of the su most surprising results. I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if a gray market car failed to make 20, um, but I also wouldn't have been surprised if it made 30 because it's an absolute unicorn on yeah. our shores. Yeah. Uh, to see this thing, first of all, to have a reserve that low and for it to sell for less than 15000 is stunning. And really, honestly, one of the two of us should have bought it. So yeah. way big congratulations to the buyer. You absolutely stole that car. Like, that's yeah. incredible. So Give me anyway. a call. I'll give you $1,000 more for it right now. Yeah. I'd like to make $1,500 <laughs> yeah. the hard yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this really does seem like something that you could flip on uh, Rad for sale. Uh, you know, but oh, this, is, sure. this is one of the few cars that I doubt I would flip this. This is this is this oh, is you would have kept it for four for 14 grand you would have kept that car and yeah. jp listen everything you said about what a car you know what a car brings is what a car is worth mm -hmm. is true i will also assert that between you know yourself and lee uh, a much better job could have been done marketing and you know imaging and you know chronologically i don't know whatever you say yeah a film and uh, and yeah. and the right photos that certainly would have yeah. made it pop more but yeah, and we have one today that I will bring to your attention if you hadn't already noticed that I think was done really well for a lowball car. So we'll yeah. get to that in a minute. All right. Well, let's do that. I mean, you're watching Bid Nerds. We're the daily nerd out of the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer, not just of yesterday, but of today. So we have cars that are hammering. What are We've got our top five picks, and our big car of the day is not even on bring a trailer. It's not on cars and bids. It's on... It's on. I, I, do we call these guys a newcomer? I mean, I guess no, they, they're, they're one of the oldest auction companies ever, but... It seems like they're a new player in this field. Uh, yeah. What do you think of this car, everybody? Ooh, Check that out. Ooh, I think yeah. I want it. That's for sure. Yeah. Look at that, man. If I tell you what, if the if the thing hit and we all had to run for you know the the lake house, mm -hmm. uh, you could do better than throwing your dogs and your loved ones in that thing and uh, and you know driving over the zombies on your way to freedom. That is that is really cool. What we're looking at here, JP, is. Uh, in fact, a 1984 Land Rover Defender 110 high cap. Um, 
And as I'm saying this, I realize I never looked up. I meant to look up what the heck high cap stands for. Maybe you know. <laughs> it's a pickup truck. That's it. So if you notice, means- there's no, there's no, uh, there's no bed back there. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a pickup truck bed rather than a cabin, uh, yeah. like a, like a normal one. Very cool. True mileage unknown out of Tucson, Arizona. This one is run by a 2.5 liter inline four turbo diesel. Makes about 100 horsepower, 110 horsepower. Makes about 190 pound foot of torque. It's a four by four. It's a five speed. Um, the guy opened up the diff and changed the final drive ratio to create better freeway driving for what would otherwise be, you know, kind of a rock crawler. Uh, so this thing, you could literally get on the highway and cruise up to uh, wherever you want to go. Uh, it's all been done for you. The car was sitting on twenty-seven, now twenty-eight thousand dollars with three hours to go. Uh, JP, have you? driven something quite like this is this going to drive exactly like a, a defender because the defender i'm thinking of the the basic defender 90 is like a v8 and and more of a jeep where this pickup truck was just going to have like a longer wheelbase what do you know about this yeah i mean look it's i mean this is a 110 platform right so it's not a d not like a def- technically a defender is a 90 uh yeah. so it's the shorter and wheelbase, the wheelbase this is the, yeah right? this yeah. is the 110 yeah. so it's the longer wheelbase so it's going to be like driving a four-door defender um but uh this does have this what engine this has the diesel right because this is yeah a, the diesel this the is not a north diesel. america car so this uh you know so they're they're pretty much gutless uh they'll get up to about 55 maybe on the freeway uh, and they'll hum along and they'll go forever they, they don't uh you know what these things are for is you know cruising around in the jungle or in the in the woods right. or over mud and they will climb their way out of anything uh you know you're just not going to get anywhere in a hurry and that's fine um the tdi engine is is magnificent i mean it, it, it's a it's a engine that can be repaired with bubble gum and you know bailing wire <laughs> and stuff like that unlike the v8 the north american powertrain is has a lot more power like technically but is a piece of junk um so this is a really really cool one and the high cap i i don't really like the pickup trucks people you know i mean i look the utility of having an a cabin inside makes sense this is more of a farm this is the perfect farm equipment you know you can put bales of hay or stuff for your horse or whatever but uh you know it's you've got it's a two-seater with a bunch of storage space in the back um gp i'm telling you uh so i i've taken two trips to australia and one time we went way way out in the middle of nowhere we drove uh 12 hours out of the resort town of can up into the cape york peninsula Mm. only two of those hours were on paved roads and while we were in a land rover uh or a land cruiser a toyota land cruiser uh what we were in is very similar to this and what's popular out there in the bush is uh is like this two-person cab but with like a flatbed and yeah. you have to have multiple spare tires and cans of gas because you're you know you're out in the middle of nowhere you, you need to be able to get yourself home there, there's there's yeah. no signal yeah and, you're not uh, stopping at the am pm for a burrito yeah, and gas yeah be, between toyota uh, mitsubishi nissan and land rover these these all-terrain vehicles are all over places like australia that are just you know so uh i don't know still untouched by man yeah, and it's I just mean, really neat yeah, this is the most common vehicle in the world. I mean, a Series right. Two Land Rover uh, is essential, or even a Series One Land Rover is essentially the same dang thing. Um, yeah. They just, you know, they're what Bradley said the other day. They're like Legos, right? It's that yeah. Lego component. Any piece off of right. any one of them is interchangeable. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, up until the brand spanking new ones, which are not defenders by the way uh but yeah there it is you can you can haul some hay around and look cool doing it um do you need a forty thousand dollar rig to haul hay around or can you just use a busted f-150 i don't know i guess for the uh for the fancy uh farmer uh here's an option for you where do you think this thing's gonna land jp i you know i really don't know these vehicles and i'm learning on the fly so uh you know, there's some action on this. We've got 16 bids. It's in Arizona. His car has been redone, and Land Rovers do have a soft spot. I would think that the turbo diesel with a manual would be attractive, maybe not to the broad audience, but to the guy who wants one might pay a premium for this. So I am I had said 29 last night, kind of poo-pooing on the Hemmings platform that, that I don't spend a lot of time on there, so that maybe not a lot of enthusiasts do. But I still think this car has a chance to bring thirty thousand dollars. So I'm going to up my bid from twenty nine to thirty grand and say that it sells there. 
Yeah, and where is it at right now? It's at 28. 28, yeah. I mean, look, the, the, the pickups are more rare. This one being redone is great. The fact that it's the diesel is great. <laughs> They're all manuals. They didn't make automatic ones. Um, oh, okay. That's so a- so uh, the only made the North, the North American Defenders had the terrible yeah. automatic, which is not something you want. But um, yeah, in this, they're all, I mean, <laughs> the older ones, you got to double clutch them. I mean, it's just like, these are, <laughs> these. this is yeah, as like rudimentary much. vehicle that was still, I mean, what year is this one? A, a nine? 80. 84. 84. 84. Okay, it's an 84. All right. So, you know, I mean, there. <laughs> this is about as rudimentary as you get. I and mean, even right up until uh, the, the late 90s when they stopped bringing them into America and then into the aughts when they were still making them in Europe, they were still absurdly rudimentary. There's nothing. To, the, not only are there no power windows, you know, you got to slide the, <laughs> the piece of glass. There's no, you know, heat or anything. You can open a vent or close a vent for air conditioning. It's just ridiculous, yeah. right? Um, but yeah. this one does seem to be an exceptional build they did build it with all the cool defender trim with the newer wheels uh suspension so yeah i mean the and the the big thing that's going to make this car uh the the thing that gives us potential is the fact that it's a left-hand drive there are so these used to be so absurdly rare in america because um you could only buy the ones that were from here uh, or imported a long time ago, but there was a moratorium on bringing them in. uh, And there were a lot of gray market vehicles and now they've opened that up and we've been flooded with Spanish and uh, South American, you know, Brazilian and, you know, it just, but they're all right hand drive. Right. So there's a gajillion right hand drive. And those really are, I mean, people ask big money for them, but they, they just don't get it. No, no. Uh, this is uh, it's a good point that this is mm-hmm. a you know a, a, an off a gray market car that is a left hand drive, which is not yeah. common, and we yeah. can't stress that enough. I, I am aware of that. That's a that's a big deal. So I mean, now we're down to platform, and is Hemmings going to bring the audience? You he, okay? Look, let's talk Hemmings here, right? Just just full uh-huh. disclosure. I wasn't even. A, I mean, I I kind of knew that they were out there. I thought I, I I knew that they had a website. Obviously, we knew that Hemmings existed because they're one of the biggest auction sites in the world. They reached out to us and said, "Hey, add us into the mix." And I was like, "Oh, what? They have a live auction website? Okay, checked it out." And now that I'm looking at it, um, I I want to love these guys, but look, your interface is terrible. It's absolutely terrible you can't scroll through the pictures look so i'm sitting here trying to show you the next picture (laughs) but in order for me to do that i gotta close this thing and then i gotta scroll down and click on the next one and then that goes big so i maybe there's a uh a gallery somewhere i okay so the gallery's down here i mean this is just Ugh, I, I, I just, it's just counterintuitive. I don't like it. Okay, so now we've got it. It's, guys, clean this thing up. It's just such a mess. Um, <laughs> this, oh, it's going to be goodness. really hard for people to come and embrace this site, given how messy the interface is. Uh, well, and and they Jay- need to get some more cars. <clears throat> Jeez, there's nothing there. Yeah, but, well, JP, that's, that's, you know, that's on them to, to figure out a way to, to entice uh, all people that list with them to list with them on their auction site. Uh, but the idea that they're going to update that interface uh, anytime soon is probably a pipe dream. Yeah. Because a place in Southern California called Garage Dream Auctions is already paying Hemmings licensing fee to use the exact same interface. And while we didn't talk to our friend Bradley about that the other day, um, what is it? Uh, Rad for Sale is going to be the exact same thing. And when I tell you, uh, exactly the same. I'm not joking. All they do yeah. is change the color, the layout of that deck that uh, Hems is selling to these other companies, these aspiring auction platforms, <laughs> is going to be a decal, um, which is interesting uh, that, that nobody wants to spend, them. everybody wants to get into the space, but nobody wants to spend the money to develop their own thing, say Stratus did. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, 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 well, like I don't want to get too into it, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 not that hard, people. Uh, you know, if, if you're yeah, if you don't know anybody that writes sauce. code, I'm not going to give you the secret sauce. Yeah. But this is this is <laughs> terrible. And if Rad for Sale is using this interface, uh, you know, this is not going to bode well for them. Um, and we'll uh, we're going to have another representative from Rad for Sale on uh, later. Brian's coming from DWA Driving Will Awesome uh, to, to maybe talk to us about it. But uh, th- so yeah. back to the well, car. There- yeah, what's yeah. that? Yeah, it'd be interesting to get their thought on on the process of like you know going to Hemmings and and using something that has you know hardly been accepted by the pleated pants community. So you yeah. know where, where do they think they're going to take it? So it's interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, you would think you would go with the with the winner. I mean, you know, copy BAT. Why would you copy right. the least used, the least successful, most obscure op, uh, auction site uh, on the cost. internet for, for enthusiasts? I mean, I guess, right? But I happen to know how much it would cost to develop something like this. And it it can't be as much as licensing someone else's. And, you know, you don't... I, I, I mean... I, I agree with you. I just don't. We have to. This at we all. have to quit talking to you sooner or later. We'll put our money where our mouth is. I know, right? I know, right? Well, yeah. the thing. All okay, right, so but, but, say, but hold on a second, yeah. though. You brought that. You, yeah. You're bringing something up, right? The whole. Good, good. Because we talk about the most interesting cars of the day on all these auction sites, and the auction site platforms is the biggest part of what determines what a lot of these cars will sell for, or whether or not they'll sell at all. Right. You know. Um, <sighs> I have seen clones of BAT, right? They're out there. Right. The reason why BAT is so successful isn't the user interface. I'll be the first to admit that. It's not just the interface, right? It's the fact right. that they've been in the game the longest. They've been around forever, right? right? And so they so have the, the audience, yeah. Uh, right. Cars and Bids is working, but it's not gangbusters. I mean, Cars and Bids has a fractional amount of cars that they move on a daily basis. Right. And that's, no. the, but the only reason that they have success is because they have Doug DeMuro getting millions of views on videos and plugging the hell out of cars and bids every day. A million people watch Doug DeMuro talking about the right. glove holder in some obscure spot in a Pagani. <laughs> uh, and he goes, and if you want to sell your car, go to cars and bids, you know? Yep. Uh, so it's like, yeah. he's got this driver that's sending uh, you know, people there right. Radwood has a pretty big mailing list, but they don't have millions of views every dang day. So right. you got to have something else. And it's like, if you think that, that just having right. a, a user interface that's different is going to make it better. That's not different. Isn't better. Functional is better. And this is not right. functional. Right. Hey, Radwood's got their work cut out for them. I'm telling yeah. you, that's, they have that's, an that's uphill an, battle. They're using this uphill, interface. Yeah. yeah, that's an uphill climb. Using a poor interface and uh, no real audience driver, uh, yeah. other than he, their mailing list. He, here's the other thing, and again, we're not, you know, we're not trying to crap on Hemmings, but like, mm -hmm. you know, Hemmings invited us politely, and <laughs> we we really appreciate the invitation. I can't tell you, we're both flattered. Our cheeks turned red, our little ankles went up. But anyway, um, <laughs> I looked. And I, you know, in a week's, two weeks worth of auctions that they've got lined up, I, you can barely find two interesting lots. I mean, yeah. like it, they, they are selling a, some mundane metal uh, on their site. So I don't know what they have to do to fix that because uh, there's really cool cars in the mag or on their site. But uh, they, they got to figure out a way to sweeten the pot uh, to get to get the, the cars. Anyway, well, they, they, I, they're going to yeah, need go to ahead. do something to let people know that their, that, that their uh, site exists. And it has to be a lot more than getting two nerds uh, on a site that gets four people watching it to talk about it. Um, <laughs> uh, they need to do some advertising. They need to get out there and make some yeah. content so that people know that their auction site, because if people know it's there, they're like, Oh yeah. Hemmings, that's a big, I mean, that's a big brand name. If I'm sitting there going, yeah, do I want to sell my car? Hemmings would certainly be on the list uh, right. initially. If I didn't know anything about any of the auction sites, but as soon as yeah. I got there and saw that there was eight cars, I'd be like, oh, this other yeah. one has hundreds and, and thousands well, of people and they're, bidding every day. Yeah, I think I'll they're get the other one. so domestic heavy, too. That's the yeah. other thing they've got. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's going to be tough. So anyways, um, okay. they need to hire De Fascination to do some assets, man. Make a film. Let's make some get films, them, guys. Uh, yeah. You know, full disclosure, we promote car content. Uh, so yeah. let's, let's talk. All right, maybe so they can think? be uh, the sponsor for season two of Porsche Road Trip coming out. On uh, that would be TV that'd be that'd be really cool. Yeah. yeah, go go after Haggerty or something. That's okay, right. uh, JP, okay. I think I think this uh, Land Rover could bring thirty grand. It sounded like you were hinting that it might bring more. Where, where's your number? I think car? I landed we'll at thirty five, didn't I? I okay, I went, I no, you didn't. Yeah, it's okay. Thirty five is high, and we'll yeah. we'll leave it there. All right, where do you want to go? Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to uh, some other cars. Let's do it. Okay. So let's jump over to P car market for a car, JP, that I think is really <laughs> interesting. I am. Uh, you know me, and I'm sure if I just read you what this car is, you'll understand why I picked it. Uh, this is on P car market out of uh, blah, 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 Orange County. We're looking at a 1977 911 Turbo Carrera with a motor swap from a 964. This has a 3.6 liter normally aspirated flat six, uh, made it to a mm. G50 five speed manual transmission and uh, Brembo brakes. Uh, this car is in 
ice green metallic. Um, and although it's showing 63,000 miles on the odometer, that is not reflective of what's on the motor. So it's true mileage unknown. But the car, by and large, is a sub 100,000 mile car in, you know, pretty nice condition. It's not amazing, <laughs> but it's very good. Um, this car, JP, I imagine freaking rocks. It's making, ironically, ex almost exactly the same horsepower as the a normally aspirated motor would be especially at high rpms i think this is like the holy grail i am absolutely head over heels in love with this little car uh i keep thinking of all the things i would do to it and uh and i'm really excited that being said the p car market p car market stand up in the office you guys and pat yourselves on the back you are with two and a half hours to go this thing is up to seventy six thousand dollars jp on 15 wow. bids that is that is really impressive. I mean, that's really, really good. So, uh, JP, uh, you know, clearly P-Car Market is pulling themselves up by their shoestrings on this one, or their bootstraps, I should say. But this is impressive. Even on Bring a Trailer, that'd be an impressive number. Uh, yeah. What do you think? What's, I mean... <laughs> is, it, is it that everybody agrees with me that this might be one of the coolest driving air-cooled cars uh, Porsche didn't make? <laughs> or... Or is it something else? It's not the the song, the videos and the and the camera work isn't that good. So what is it? Ice green metallic cells. Uh, everybody wants yes. to be like Rami, and everyone wants to be like Magnus Walker. Put some stripes on this thing, like Magnus yeah. car. And uh, no, I don't, dude. This car is pretty amazing, and I love the idea of that powertrain being in this body. Oh man, um, look at that thing. That is really I wanna, sharp. I want to yeah. put my I want to put my fifteen fifty two wheels on that thing. Yeah, and absolutely rock it. Like that is just gorgeous. Yeah, the early the early wings uh, where there's no room for the intercooler and uh i love the rear wing windows that pop out on the mid-years um yes you know, uh, that is just That's such a, such a I great don't know feature. why they got rid of that yeah uh jp correct me if i'm wrong the poster behind you is the ice machine your uh, buddy up in the pacific northwest had that yeah. car was the same color was it not ice cream metallic and correct. did it have recaros and an interior in this same dark green uh, livery yeah, like a port that's did. an original yeah. porsche colorway right yep yep, yep yeah i remember is, from the video what a great uh great interior that is what i love about this car if you can find an interior shot maybe uh our third shot down the tops of the door caps and the carpets are black so i feel like you could swap out the dash the top of the dash for one uh that's in black and then you really could live with that green interior with a black yeah. dash cap and a prototypo and i think man i'm telling you that and then some you know if you happen to have some 17 inch black wheels like i do lying around yeah. oh, oh boy yeah, i would this a is beauty. a car I would trade Ruby for this car in a heartbeat, and I love mm, Ruby. Mm. So I, I don't go. even mind the black, the green dashboard. It's just so it just reminds you of like how different this car is. But yeah, I'm with you. A black dash would be great. Uh, oh. What a what a great car. Um, I would love to get behind the wheel and feels what that's actually like. I wish they had a picture, a decent picture of the engine. There's just like there's a couple pictures. I know, isn't it? Close it's just am it's amazing how bad some of these uh, buckets of. Guys, get your heads out of your butt. Like, take better pictures. Oh, wait, Fill the bucket. Yeah. Uh, but still, I, yeah. The, All right. The AC unit is black, which is really throwing me off. I, I'm not used to seeing an AC unit painted black. This, am I tripping, or is that correct? Uh, the AC unit is black? I'm Maybe it's another car I looked at. Maybe it's yeah, another car. I think it was our black car. From, I think yeah. it was our black car from yesterday. Oh, there's no AC on this. Yeah, it was the black car. The black the m491 from yesterday they painted the, the ac unit black which i'm not oh, used to okay. seeing that would be weird, this yeah. one this one should have come with ac and they took it off and i well, would yeah, say you can see the hole there. the hole is there yeah. and you know they, yeah, they, yeah they still have the bracket for it which is weird why did yeah. they get rid of the bracket uh going right. through all they, the trouble to pull pull the thing apart weird but um, i would just leave the ac on this car makes enough power and still blows cold air like leave it on there and enjoy the car mm, year round especially in la you know what the problem is probably is the interface between the actual AC unit in the back and getting it pumped up to the front because on a 964 and a 993, you have yeah. about a thousand different little servo actuators between the engine and the, and the front. Right. Uh, so it's probably a, com it's probably prohibitive from a computer point of view because you have to have a computer in the front, computer in the middle, servos, all that yeah. stuff working together. Uh, my 993 air conditioning technically works, but it only blows cold out of one side and heat out of the other. So it's like, <laughs> 
<laughs> Great, thanks. And to fix that's it, a, they've got to pull the dash and everything apart, and it's like, oh, oh my god, that's forget a, it. That's a that's a cruel joke in Las Vegas when it you put, really, you really put heat is. on one side of the car. It's and true. Something. It's so true. Oh, man. Uh, all right. So, well, where the hell is this thing going to land? I don't know. This is <clears> this is like uh, to go. So I've had to rethink my entire strategy on this car. Um, I still think eighty grand would be all the money. Our our car yesterday with the uh, the M four ninety one M four seventy car only brought eighty three thousand bucks. So I would like to think that this car will comfortably make it to eighty. But it's just weird that the morning of I'm changing my bid on P car market by mm. ten thousand dollars. So eighty yeah. grand to you, JP. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the fact that it's a convert, um, not a convertible, it's wide body. The 964 3.6 liter engine is just such a popular, great, fantastic engine. I kind of have one. Um, yeah. And the fact that it's got a G50 in here, Ooh, but it wee. looks like a, a, a an, an old air cold turbo. So you have like I mean, none of the weird turbo problems, especially Man. the early turbos without an intercooler. What I mean, car. this car just has all the things, uh, you know, and suspension, blah, 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 blah. This car is. Oh man, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll. What did? You, what was your number? Eighty grand. Yeah, man. I guess I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go eighty-one. Think maybe it could yeah. go even higher. I think. Uh, you know. I mean. I think most driving enthusiasts would rather have this car than the cab that we talked about yesterday. The Cabster oh, is such yeah. a great looking car, uh, and it's original and it's all the things. But this car is obviously the car you want to drive. Holy cow! Oh my goodness, JP. I would. I would spend the money to make this car. Like I. I, yeah. I it's something. It's. The, the route that they took is a route I would follow. Like that is unbelievable. A 964 motor, G50 gearbox, Turbo Carrera with the Turbo Carrera wing, uh, yeah. which was only put, available in this country for put, two uh, years. Put that, put, that, put that stripe on it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that would be so cool oh, down there. Man. Defenders, yeah. 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 So there you go. All right, what a car. We'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, JP, an interesting let's, one to watch. Let's, let's go over to Martinez, California and look at a 1982 BMW 320i Sport. Uh, 1983 was the last year of the 320, the following year. And then in 84, we got the E30 platform. So this is one of the last two model years for the E21. Uh, it uses a 1.8 liter inline four, uh, makes just 100 horsepower, just 100 pound foot of torque, uh, and comes with a five speed transmission. But the sport on this car, which is a package, gets you um, a rear sway bar, a front spoiler with fog lights, a limited slip differential, and those really cool Recaro seats. This is actually kind of a neat equipped car. It's just grossly underpowered. Um, our car out of uh, Martinez, California has 220,000 miles on it, but this guy went out of his way to take some pretty decent pictures. And JP, did you get a chance to watch the video that he included? I did not. Okay, so what happens is he narrates, which I haven't seen hardly anybody do on Bring a Trailer. He narrates similar to what you do, and he throws up a drone. And the narration continues while he cuts the video from inside the car to the drone and back during the same narration. And I think he does, for an amateur, a pretty decent job of bringing this car to life and watching, giving the viewer a chance to see this car on the road. That being said... BMW 320s aren't worth shit, you know, yeah. like, you know, in this car, I mean, if it all works out, he might get seven grand, you know, like, <laughs> but yeah. I admire the effort. I think this is what a lot of people should do. He's also talks very plainly and very transparently about uh, the fit and the condition of his car. Uh, he says, I'm going to go over some, uh, what do you call it? Some, uh, 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 what are they? Jesus. Um, rumble strips in the road you know like the speed yeah. bumps he's going to go over some speed bumps and he says so you can hear the car uh the suspension suspend and uh, when he does it it goes he cuts to the aerial view of the drone uh and then you hear the crash inside the cabin of the speed bumps and he's going like five miles an hour and it's like good dunk you think he hit a dog or something I mean, it's really bad oh <laughs> anyways but uh, pretty funny and i like i said i think he does a pretty good job um jp these cars aren't worth a lot of money it was sitting at four thousand bucks on 12 bids last night uh what do you think did you ever drive a 320 i know they're they're weak yeah i mean i've driven them i've never owned one uh i've never yeah. liked them they were always you know it, the, the problem was is growing up when we grew up this was the cheap bmw you wanted a th you know you wanted e30 uh you didn't want yeah. the lousy 320 and you know uh, 
I, you know, I appreciate them now in hindsight, I kind of like the looker and everything, but this one's just such a pile. I mean, you see, look at the pictures, you look at the close up pictures and you love, Hey, thank you for showing us. But you know, I mean the paints, this thing is in as poor or worse condition than that uh, E30 of the same color that we looked at yesterday. Um, I mean, even the tires were bald. You saw me kind of getting close oh, up yeah. on that. I mean, it's, what the hell, dude? Uh, I, I, I love it. Huh? Yeah. The car's in real shape. <laughs> it's, I, it's a little bit like our uh, 18 IS from Linwood yesterday, you know? Yeah, I like this guy. I like what he's doing. I like, I'm with you. I, I like that he went out and did the video, and he's being totally honest and and uh, and being transparent and all that kind of fun stuff. But is that going to really translate into more money for this car? This car's a POS. Uh, yeah. And uh, as much as I appreciate it, I just don't know. Wait, wait, are we on BAT? Yeah, we're on BAT, right? So We're on BAT, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean... Hmm. I wonder if this would have been a better play for uh, cars and bids, oddly enough. And I say it over and over and over again that cars oh, no. don't bring money uh, we, on cars and bids. The, the, JP, I take huh? it back. This is on cars and bids. Oh, it is on cars and bids. Okay. Yeah, this is All on right, cars cool. and bids. And this is a no reserve auction on cars and bids. This might be speaking to the Doug DeMuro audience more than it would on BAT. It's very, here's something that's very interesting uh, that I noticed a couple yesterday that I meant to bring up at some point. Um, my, so I have sold yeah. two manual Cayennes in the last year. Um, yeah. I sold the one that I bought that I had personally for the last for years. Uh, and then I had also put, found one that I bought specifically to kind of flip. Um, the first one I sold on cars and bids. Uh, and yeah. the second one we sold on bring a trailer, you know, just a week yeah. ago. And the, the, the BAT one brought significantly more money. You know, they're basically the yeah. same vehicle, same year. Right. Uh, did the same thing to the big tires, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, and we made really cool videos for each one. And the videos were pretty darn similar as well. Um, BAT brought, brought more money we only got like six or seven hundred views on that video it was shockingly low for the thousands of people that right. viewed the ad yeah transversely or conversely or some some kind of verse Con uh conversely. conversely yeah conversely uh over at um at cars and bids uh, the car, the, the you know basically the same cayenne went for with fewer miles went for less money but the video got like almost two thousand views Wow. So it's Isn't like, weird? what the heck is going on here? How is that possible? Yeah. Um, I think maybe that's because I, it, it, I, there may have been some, like the drive or someone may have picked up that, uh, the video for the Cayenne, uh, yeah. on cars and bids. And, and, you know, so some publication may have shared that and got the extra views, but I was, I was fully expecting way, way, way more views on BAT, uh, that just did not happen. And that was part of the reason we sold the car there because we, as it was kind of a promotion for this show, it was like, Hey, let's right. give attention so interesting right? all right so jp i think this no reserve car is going to bring uh let me just go out and say 6500 bucks what do you think where's it at now five thousand yep uh let's see we had a bid 18 minutes ago that brought it up to five thousand yep god there's some people actually looking at this thing I, yeah uh what'd you say 60 what 6500 yeah i'll go 5500 i don't this thing's I, well, right. yeah yeah yeah. Who knows? Okay. Uh, go, I hope the kid gets a, a bunch of money for it. That'd be awesome. Yeah. He deserves it. All right. Good work. Okay, JP. We're going to stay on cars and bids. Another no reserve auction. We're going to look at Atlanta, Georgia, a 2004 Mercedes Benz SLK <laughs> 320. This is a um, you know folding hard top with a six speed manual and the AMG Sport package. It has the two tone interior, and by all accounts, with just seventy two thousand miles, this car is unmodified, stock, no stories. These cars are shockingly soft in the secondary market. With our car on fourteen bids at just fifty seven hundred dollars, JP, take it away. Well, you're missing the one the one important thing about this car. It's a three the manual. No, oh, yeah. well, yeah, the, I mean, okay, well, there's that. Yeah, that's the yeah. super important thing. But this is a yeah. 320. This is not the uh, four cylinder, four cylinder compressor, yeah, you know, supercharged yeah. piece of junk. Uh, this is a this is a six cylinder engine in this teeny little car, matched with a five speed, uh, or is it a six speed? I don't even know. It's, um, a, it's a six speed. It's yeah, a, it is a, JP, I gotta. 
I got huh? a dog scratching at the door, so you take it away for this car on one day. Okay. I'll be, <laughs> yeah. We, look, these cars are not fantastic. They're not amazing. This is not a car that you're like, oh my gosh, everybody has to have one. But for the money, I can think of very few cars that match the performance and fun factor that you're going to get out of this little Mercedes. Uh, a man, being able to row through the gears, having some torque. I have never driven this generation of, uh, of, of SL500, or not 500, SL320. I have driven the second gen uh, with essentially the same powertrain with the six speed. And that car is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it really is. Uh, it's kind of a Z4 killer, right? A regular Z4, not a Z4 M. Um, you know, it has a little bit more torque and just feels good. It just everything about this car. I wish they made SL 500s with manuals in this country. I know that they made SL 320 manuals for Europe and never brought them here. Uh, but uh, this would be a fun car to rip around depending on what the cost is ultimately uh, going to be so cost is everything in this car where uh where this thing winds up uh you know at the end of the day uh we're going to see very shortly what uh where is it sitting right now we're waiting for d to come back uh this car has 14 bids on it uh it's sitting at 5700 dollars how many miles this car have 72,000 miles i mean that's the other thing about it the fact that it's a mercedes uh, it means that this thing is going to run forever and ever and ever. Um, these, th this is as solid a powertrain as I think you can get, especially for the era that, that 3.2 liter V6 with a manual, they, just, you don't have to they, do anything to it. Yeah. They put this motor JP, they put this motor mm -hmm. in everything. Every yeah. car they sold had this motor as an option. It, it, yeah. it really was their bread and butter drivetrain, at least for North America. You know, in Europe, even during this time frame, uh, diesels had emerged and were were the the bigger grab uh, in in you know throughout Europe. But in North America, this motor was you know their staple, and uh, and yeah, it's it's a pretty decent drivetrain. It's not inspiring. It's not rev happy. Um, it's, it's despite it's. I actually I like the way this car looks. It's yeah. you know it's not an enthusiast car, but it it, it probably is fun to drive. Um, you know, the, the, this one just looks a little dirty, uh, you know, for 70,000 miles. It doesn't it certainly doesn't look like it was kept up the way you would expect a Mercedes to be kept up. But um, I loved, uh, you know, AMG's sort of influence on the, you know, the bodywork and the wheels and, and some of the other things here. Yeah, the you trim, know, the big, bo the, the big uh, monoblock wheels and all that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. and the duotone interior. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's the regular SLKs look awful. They are just like no. just garbage looking, <laughs> no, they, the compressors, yeah. especially of this generation. But this one actually looks pretty, I mean, it, it almost looks kind of butch. It's as, as butch yeah. as you can look for this car. Um, yeah. The I when you were gone, I was talking about I yeah. I have my friend a very good friend of mine had the next generation one with a manual and it had this yeah. same powertrain, but that was on the base version, not the top end. Yeah. Um, and I wish they made the AMG version of the newer one, you know, with a manual. They just never right. did it. Uh, that would have been one hell of a car. You could just roast. Yeah. You could just drifted for days but oh this car goodness. would be a heck of yeah. a lot of fun for not a lot of money. If it's under ten thousand yeah. dollars, it's probably one of the most fun you could have for the money. Yeah, and the compressor, I, JP, I cannot stress it enough. It is one mm. of the harshest, you know, vibration heavy, yeah. non smooth, non fun. It just it sounds like it's broken all yeah. the time at idle and when it revs. The compressor is a terrible drivetrain. This, on the other hand, is really nice. And the next generation of this car, um, you know, the the V six made like over three hundred horsepower and actually revved it was a yeah. fun car to drive a fun car yeah yeah so anyways here we go no reserve auction jp again out of atlanta georgia uh sitting at fifty seven hundred dollars on 14 bids um i oh man i'm not sure i'm comfortable with this i wrote seven thousand dollars it's at 57 mm. i'm gonna change my bid to 6500 bucks mm. um yeah, like you know, you would I, with all the irony in the world, you sent me one of these over the weekend. That's here. I in the did. Bay Area. That was completely, like, yeah, like and it's, random. And it's and it was listed at sixty five hundred bucks. And uh, you know, I mean, my goodness, the, I can't believe when you sent me that that Craigslist ad in uh, in the Bay Area, I couldn't believe how inexpensive these cars were. Like I would think that would at least bring twelve thousand bucks. Nope, not by today's standards. Not, not even close. A chance. I mean, you think yeah. about it. Most people. I mean, this just isn't on enthusiasts. Uh, list. I mean, right. nobody thinks of this car because so few of them have manuals. I mean, it's like 
absolutely super crazy rare that they have manuals. Um, no. I, I've had arguments with people uh, about it. You know, oh, no, they don't make a manual. I'm like, yes, they do. No, they don't. I'm in the SLK club. I know. I have pleated yeah. pants. I know. It's like, I'm telling you, they do. I've driven them. But, uh, yeah, uh, I would absolutely buy this. If I, if I were, I mean, I'm not going to buy it personally, but if I were a young enthusiast and I wanted something uh, fun and cool and cheap and reliable and all the things, this car will do it. I mean, it just will. And those hard tops. Okay. Here, here's another thing too. People talk about how the hard tops are so complex and they're going to cost all kinds of money yeah. to fix. They don't break. Yeah. These things yeah. do not break. They are <laughs> unbelievably reliable. It just doesn't make any sense. Oh, how reliable they are. Unless you leave a so beer can true. on it when you try to close it, then there, you're going to have a problem. Ask me how I know. And, uh, and, yeah. And that, that could happen. That's and yeah. these are, these are yeah. real life problems. Man. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. All right. <laughs> so you said 6,500, you stole my bid. Yeah. I'm going to say 6,300. Ah. I'm not going over that. No way. Um, yeah, that's all right. right. Okay. And the last car of the day, what else we got? All right, JP, just to throw a curveball at you because you okay. crushed me yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's take a look uh, at the You got to have an alpha in there. That's the only uh, way you can 19, beat me. 19, so, and the thing is, you actually always How many times do alpha, I always right? beat you on the alpha? I know. <laughs> this is so stupid. Uh, 1973 Alfa <laughs> Romeo GTV 2000. Uh, JP, listen, I, I love these cars. Um, I think, you know, now that I think about it, we've only ever owned one coupe, uh, my dad and I, and it was a great, it was a 69 car. But here's the thing, um, similar to that Turbo Carrera, if I had a GTB, I would take the bumpers off of it. I would put the decals and I'd put these same Alpha Holics. These are, Alpha Holics is a company in England that's making an aluminum wheel in a 15 inch side size that looks like the GTA's magnesium only in 14 inch size. Uh, So this wheel becomes very attractive because uh, it allows you to get uh, more contemporary and better rubber, you know, something that's more widely found on a 15 inch variety. Uh, And it just looks great too. It fills up the wheel wells better. Uh, This guy, similar to what uh, Bradley said, he Legoed this car together with um, uh, the uh, grill from a different model. He's got the seats from a 69, the wing seats. He's got a prototypo in there. A um, lot of cool things. He built the motor, uh, makes some power. He's got the Alphaholics wheels uh, and snapped together a car that is evocative of a GTA, but is probably a fantastic car to drive on the street. Uh, so out of Newport Coast, California, whatever that means, um, uh, is this true mileage unknown two liter twin cam that sounds like it's probably making you know switch from fuel injection to 40 inch webers a pair of uh two barrel webers probably making about 140 150 horsepower in this thing uh and and it's sitting at a whopping jp sixty two thousand seven hundred dollars uh with two and a half hours to go on uh a credible uh 18 bids what do you think is this uh you think this car is going to hit 70 grand or is i don't know but it sure is it sure is pretty uh and it sure is cool i like all the stuff that's been i call it lego together or whatever what's that red button underneath the dash uh, I, I i was i was cl- uh, i gotta find that because i'm it's gonna kill me until i know look at this thing what is that hold on a second i'm gonna bring that up that's a defroster of some sort huh is that what that is that little I don't know. Button? It's in the wrong place to be at a Froster. I really don't know what that is. Huh. I'm, uh, I don't I'm intrigued. I, I think that button is going to bring an extra $10,000. That's right. Because Michael Deep doesn't know what it is. Unbelievable. We stumped the chump. All right. Yeah, well, that's easy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, wait. There's a close-up picture of it. Maybe that'll tell you what it is. It looks like it, a radio. It's got, it's got squiggly lines in it, but it's on the left side of the steering wheel, which doesn't make sense for the HVAC, you know? Yeah, I don't, um, I don't know. Uh, all right, so what do you think this thing's going to land on? You're the alpha expert. Yeah, so our, our good friend and uh, hopefully friend of the show, Peter George, sold his 69, like, great, like, it's not that it had amazing provenance, but he could um, validate the entire history of that car and had parts and records that dated all the way back to when his car was new out of Northern California. He sold his car for $70,000 and I have yet to see another GTV bring quite that much money on, uh, he- on Hemmings. So this car looks like it's poised to get there. Like it's going to be really close. Um, and I think it is. So I'm going to bid $70,000. That means it needs to go another $7,300, another 10%, 11%. I'm crazy. Well, you know, like we always say, BAT is the place for late rallies. Uh, but I have there hasn't been a bid since last night. Uh, so I know, I'm going right? to so, go soft and go 68 and just get right. the under here and 
Yeah, I mean, guess. it's such a cool car. I, I'm with you on those wheels. Wow. I mean, those just really, really make the car. Uh, and I want one of these in my life. I feel like the, one of these yeah. needs to happen at some point. But all right, yeah. so there you go. Well, we're, right. we're moving back out to... Uh, we're moving back out to Vegas at some point, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna drag my my sister wound up with my dad's old Duetto, and it's got those same wheels on it. So I'll mm. drag that out, and you and Rochelle can take it out on date night. Nice, excellent. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, there it is. Another episode of Bid Nerd, your daily nerd on the most interesting cars of the day. Cars, bids, bring a trailer, and all the popular automotive enthusiast auction sites. Uh, we do this every Monday through Friday. We do it at about, we, we go live like around nine o'clock in the morning ish and, uh, you can hang out with us. Yeah. We're not right on time every day, but 30, that's all right. 30 or 40 minutes of ish. Yeah. You know, somebody wants to pay us. We'll be on yeah. time. Uh, so exactly. in the meantime, it's when we do it. Uh, so there it is. You yeah. guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure you hit the like subscribe button, share the videos, let everybody know that we exist. Tell us about the cars you want us to talk about on, uh, on bid nerds and, uh, and we will. So yeah. thank we, you. Are, What's that? Are we any closer to getting a guest this week? Who, who's, who's uh, so we're, we're trying to tee I mean, up. Uh, yeah. We're trying to tee up <laughs> Kelly Smith from Haggerty and Brian nice. from DWA. So uh, stay tuned. Maybe they will be, one of them will be here tomorrow or one of the next. Uh, three cool. shows, so. All right. I hope so. That'd be fun. All right, guys. All right. Thanks for hanging out. All right, buddy. Good show. Thanks. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Get Bye. those nerds. Nerds.